one and all, it's Slappy McPhee from the Retro Arena, and we are here today with another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be part of a series of a few videos to help people out to upgrade if they have older versions of our 3.0 with the Retro Arena image on the XU4 specifically. However, you know, what we're going to be doing here in this tutorial today can also be applied most likely to RetroPie builds. Uh, if you seem to have issues with being able to see your RetroPie build in Network Neighborhood, uh, just like the uh, older versions of our builds do with the XU4, then, you know, this may be something that could help you out. And what exactly are we talking about today? Well, we are talking about something that is referred to as WSD, and that is web services discovery this is a protocol just kind of quick and dirty that came around roughly around the same time as when windows vista was launched and uh, one of the great things about it is that uh, rather than relying on samba version one especially specifically due to the different security issues wrapped up in it um, you can use this discovery protocol to actually be able to see Linux machines and Windows machines, right, if you completely disable Samba, various versions, in Network Neighborhood. One of the things that we're going to need to do is realize that this tutorial revolves around Windows 10, be it Home, be it Pro, uh, Enterprise, uh, LTSB slash LTSC. You know, if you have Windows 7, some of this may apply. You might have to do a little bit of digging. Uh, the items that you would actually configure on Linux itself, those are probably going to still be fine, right? There might be a little bit, though, about how we're taking a look at things regarding the uh, stuff within the Windows programs and then also services on Windows 7 that may be different. So your mileage may vary. The cool thing about that is that we actually provided a link on our downloads page to a lot more information about this in general, and then also a page with Microsoft that tells you how you can harden even further to really try to wipe out being reliant on uh, Samba version 1, uh, NetBIOS, and Wins as the uh, older protocols. This being said, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to head on over to our website and we'll go ahead and grab a download of the package. So I'm showing you this here in a Windows 10 Pro virtual machine that I have set up. So the speed of it isn't necessarily as quick as I would like. However, you know, I want to make sure that I limit uh, how much of my host system resources I'm using for this. So we want to go ahead and swing on over to the downloads page and at the time of the recording here it's pretty much going to be sitting at the bottom and within our additional files section. So as you can see here enabling web services discovery WSD aka we're using as considered to be a quote-unquote Samba fix. Here's the link to that um, one uh, web page I told you about. and We'll just go ahead and open it up here real quick just so you can kind of see. This is where I gained most of my knowledge in regards to this because we've had several users in the community talk about how through the various Windows updates over the last couple of years they've lost that ability to see their XU4 build before we actually did our public release. So the beta, for example, with our N2 build and also our Rock Pro 64 build, that they were having issues being able to see the machines in network neighborhood. Not only that, they could type in an IP address, they might not see it. But if they type in the host name, they might see it or vice versa. So hopefully this will get you over those hurdles if you run into this problem. So like I said, there's a lot of great information here on this web page. Definitely give kudos to the guys that put this together. And then also, like I said, if you want a bit more detail and really dig further into the weeds, uh, there's also this Microsoft support page on how to be able to uh, detect, enable, and disable the various versions of Samba. Just as a heads up, just like they tell you in here, if you actually disable Samba version 2, for example, it will also conversely disable Samba version 3, and that's because they're actually using the same protocol stack. It's just that version 3 is a more updated and robust build, or excuse me, uh, iteration of Samba's protocols. So I'm going to go ahead and click here to download. And we'll 
we'll go ahead and save the file. Now here within the file, you're going to go ahead and notice once we get this extracted that we also have a text version of what we're going over here for instructions today. Um, not going to have it up here on this screen. Uh, however, it will be there for you if you feel that you want to go back and take a look at it and reference it, right? So a couple items, um, if you're newer to doing all this stuff, you know, thank you for stopping by. Uh, thank you for being a member of the community. If you're, if you're not a member of our community, you might be interested in checking out what we have to offer. Full disclosure and disclaimer on this is that there are going to be registry edits. There's gonna be other security edits in here and the Retro Arena and who we represent for individual members we do not take any responsibility in regards to anything that you do here, even though we've actually tested it. There's plenty of different things that can go on in your operating system environments. So you need to be aware of the fact that everything that you do is at your own risk. We definitely recommend that you back up uh, your image for your retro gaming build uh, before making these changes just to be completely safe even though you should be all right and then uh, regarding the windows services we're going to kind of tweak those shouldn't be an impact for you uh, you shouldn't run into any problems with that we are going to be adding in a registry key if you want to actually take a backup of your registry we're not going to cover that in the tutorial however it's fairly easy and you can easily find information for that on the internet uh, however, you might want to go ahead and do that if that's a concern for you. First of all, we're going to take a look at the Windows side of things, right? And what we want to go ahead and do is, as I said, Microsoft with different patches and things over the last couple of years, they've done some weird things. Uh, they've had to kind of roll back on some things that they deployed and then ended up realizing it caused issues. They had to make some other changes, etc. So what you want to actually do first of all is let's go into the control panel here and let's take a look at our programs and features. And we want to go into turn Windows features on or off. So we want to take a look at these this applications in here and how it enables and disables in the stack. And the first thing that we want to look at is you want to be sure the SMB 1.0 CIFS file sharing support that that's unchecked. That's just not safe. This is something that is now the default behavior with Windows. SMB Direct is actually a file sharing protocol with remote direct memory access that helps speed things up and uh, does some other things, but that's specifically tailored to SMB version three only. So we see that we don't have this checked and enabled, so that's a good thing. Uh, if you do, you wanna go ahead and remove the checkbox and let it clear those Windows features to be sure that it's shut off. So I also have uh, another virtual machine running here for Windows 10 Home, so I can kind of show you the, the correlation. So we'll go ahead and also come in here and check to see what the default behavior is as of the 19th of September 2019, as both of these uh, copies of Windows have been updated to the most recent version. And yes, there are differences, what you will see for different services that are available within Windows, depending upon whether or not you're using Home, whether or not you're using Pro, Enterprise. So that's the reason why I kind of bring this up. So as you can see, when we scroll down in through here, for example, we're not seeing the remote client here for SMB version 3 with SMB Direct, right? So that's not here. So if you're happening to use Windows Home, you're not going to see that. So there's no reason to be alarmed. It's not part of it. But once again, you want to be sure, right, that you have the SMB 1.0 unchecked. We don't want to have that as something that's enabled. So I'm just going to go ahead here quick and pause this virtual machine and we'll head back over to my pro build. Now, what we're going to need to do, first of all, that we verified that we don't have SMB version 1 enabled right now, right? Or if you did, you disabled it. 
is there's two services that we're going to need to change their behavior. And one of the ways to do it is if you come down here to your search bar, you can type in services.msc. And now we're going to scroll down and look for function discovery provider host and function discovery resource publication. I'm actually going to go ahead and fire my home build back up again real quick. And we'll go in there and see what the default behavior looks like. So regardless of what edition of Windows 10 you're running, you should still see these services. And when we take a look at this, this is the default behavior. You see both services here. It says they are running, however, it's manual. In this case, we're going to change them to be automatic. We want to be sure as well that, of course, it is running. You can go ahead and perform a reboot after, make sure that they take off and, and they do what they're supposed to automatically. However, that shouldn't be a concern. So we'll switch back over. And the way that you do that, if you're unfamiliar with working with services in Windows, is you're going to come into the properties here. You're going to change the startup type to automatic, click apply, and then OK. We've now taken care of the Windows side with the exception for one last thing. And we're going to want to add in a registry key that essentially helps stop or prevent Samba server itself from running on your machine, being that of your Windows machine when you're talking back and forth. And the easiest way to do it would be is to go into that document that is here in this package. And as we discuss with it in the instructions, you're going to type in CMD to pull up the command prompt. You want to right click, run as administrator to be safe. Accept the fact that yes, you are wanting to do this. Come in here and you want to paste in that value. And what you should get returned for a status is the operation completed successfully. And at that point, we're done on the Windows side of things. And here we are, completed successfully. Now, if you just want to check it to be 100% sure, you can actually do something where you can copy the directory line here, right, for pulling that up in your registry editor. And to get there, you're going to type in REG and the registry editor pop up. Yes, we want to go in. Paste. So what I did is, is I copied out just the, the directory of where this is actually looking for the registry entry. As you can see, it added a new value. This value was not here before. So that means that we're not turning SMB version 1 on by default. So this is just another step towards ensuring that uh, SMB version 1 is not going to be an issue for us. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dig into the Linux side of things now. You're going to need to have an SSH client, something similar to Bitvice, PuTTY, TerraTerm, Secure CRT. There's multiple options you can go with. For today's tutorial, we're going to be using PuTTY. And then also a way to be able to transfer a couple of files that you're going to need. And in this case today, we're going to be using WinSCP. You can also use FileZilla as long as you set it up to do an SSH session, etc. There's other clients out there that you can use. But these ones are going to be the ones we're going to use today. So we're going to go ahead and open up our downloads folder where we downloaded this package from the website. I've already got it extracted. And in here, you will see that file that I mentioned previously about the steps to enable the file sharing. So we'll go ahead and get that open, do a split screen on this. These are the two files that we're going to need to transfer over. And we're going to go ahead and follow these steps that I have outlined here so that you can go ahead and do so, knock those out. We'll go ahead and connect with WinSCP. I'm going to go ahead and connect as root. Uh, in the case of the fact that this is actually doing network-based items, this is not a big uh, deal to be doing it and performing these steps as root. All right. So we are now connected with WinSCP. And let's take a look at a couple of these steps here that we're going to need to perform. 
So first off, we're going to want to go ahead and actually modify our smb.config file. This is your global configuration file for your Samba service on the device. And what we're going to be doing right here is we're going to be hard coding and telling your Samba service that when it runs on the XU4, which is a server side, right? So server minimum protocol needs to be a Samba version 2 underscore 10. And then any clients during the handshake that want to be able to talk has to have a minimum of Samba version 2, a maximum of Samba version 3. That is the highest level of Samba for a revision number that's currently out there at the time of recording of this video. So we want to add these lines to our Samba config file. So we'll go ahead and perform the step here. And I'm going to, of course, need to connect to my XU4. I'm going to connect with Pi Gaming. Of course, depending upon what you're doing here for be it uh, for the, your distribution, that is, you want to log in with a correct account accordingly. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in. Go ahead, maximize this. Now, what you want to do is put these lines in below uh, global directly. So you could actually just key down to that, or excuse me, arrow down to it. However, you can also use the uh, search function. So I'm going to go ahead just for grins and use the search function. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control W for where is, and I'm going to type in global. And it's brought me down to that first instance, and I'm here. Copy this set of lines, paste it in. Putty's default for paste is right click. If you're unaware, you can, of course, change that behavior. Uh, if you want to go ahead and do that on your own, you do it through the settings. So now that we have those lines pasted, we'll go ahead and control X to come out. Yes, because we do want to overwrite that file. And now we need to restart the Samba service. So we'll go ahead and paste in our command to do so. Now that we've taken care of Samba itself, we're going to go ahead and start to work on the WSD configuration. So first off, we're going to need to have a place to drop our actual Python script for WSDD to run. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste. Now that I have that pasted, I'm going to go ahead and head back into WinSCP and head on into the location that it tells me I need to go. So we're going to be looking at USR local bin, and we should now see the USR local bin. And I did have to do a refresh. So you can either right click in the folder and click refresh, or you can hit the refresh icon up here. Now that we see this folders here, what we need to do is we need to copy the downloaded wsdd.pypython script to that directory. So go ahead and head back into my downloads folder and drag and drop. The next step that we're going to need to do is be sure that we're set to an octal of 0755. I've mapped it out here in the document for those that may not choose to watch the tutorial, but you'll right click and choose properties, and then we're going to change the octal to 0755 for the mode. You're going to check box all of the executables on the file. So that one's taken care of. Now we need to navigate to etc. system D system. So we'll go to etc. System D and system. And we want to go ahead and drop the file that's labeled as wsdd.service. And we want to go ahead and perform the same action on this file to put it to 755. 
All right, so now we've got both of those files copied over. We want to reload the daemon program that runs in the background that triggers events by running sudo systemctl daemon reload. And then we want to actually enable the WSDD service file by running sudo systemctl enable wsdd.service. And now we see that it successfully completed the symlink, so we're good with that. And the next thing we want to do is reboot our board. Now, in our build, we actually have, before I do this reboot, you'll notice I didn't type in sudo. We actually have um, shortcuts created with our builds to kind of speed those processes up so you don't have to type sudo for reboot. You don't have to type sudo for restart. There's various ones. To get into the setup script, you can just type in setup. You know, so we have those baked in. However, depending upon what you're doing, of course, you may actually have to use the sudo command to perform your reboot. So through the magic of video editing, we're now back after the reboot. And go right up into here, right click and restart the session. And let's see if our new service that we have added is running. And we can do that by typing in sudo system ctl status and then the name of the service in this case wsdd.service and good news here is that we are seeing that the service is successfully loaded it is active and is running so let's swing back over to our network neighborhood and see whether or not we're seeing the build Very quickly, you notice that it is able to see the build just fine by host name in network neighborhood, and I'm able to access it. So we have been successfully able to enable WSD on our Linux build. Pretty much that sums up the steps that we're doing to take care of hardening a little bit better for Samba and you can always go in and check to see what's going on with those services just to be completely sure that Microsoft has not done some type of patch or update that has actually disabled those services. If that's the case, you just need to go back into them and you need to set them to be automatic and you should do a reboot and you should be all set. For those out there that are actually using our build, especially viewing this for the XG4 specifically, and you have a build that had been in place previous to our 3.1.x refresh, then I'll go ahead quick and just kind of go over this with the host name changes. Uh, first of all, we'll come in here and we will control C to get out of the status for the service. But if you take a look at the document here underneath extras, it kind of talk about some of these things. And in this case, what we did is moving forward, we have decided to change the naming of the host files to be for the boards specific to that board version. Okay, so as an example, Odroid, be it if you have an XU4, if you have a C2, if you have the N2, you know, they've got all these different boards out. The host name is always Odroid. Well, we've had some users discuss the fact that they have multiples of these different boards, makes things a little bit easier to identify. So we're going to go ahead and update the host name here to actually match the board. In this case, it's going to be Odroid XU4. What we want to go ahead and do is change a couple files or update a couple files, excuse me. And one of them is going to be the actual hostname file. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste in the sudo nano, etc. hostname. And we'll just move on over here and append the hostname file to actually be called xu4. Control X to save. Yes, we want to overwrite. Once we've done that, we also need to update the actual host files itself. Otherwise, you'll end up getting this strange warning or error because it has to match with the host name. So in the host files, which we will go ahead and modify by entering in sudo nano, etc. hosts, 
we will see that for the 127.0.0.1, not only is it localhost, but also odroid, we need to have this match the host name that we actually changed in the host name file. So then control X, yes, we want to save and close out. Now we will go ahead and perform a reboot and be back momentarily to show that the updates have essentially taken effect successfully. Okay, and we're back now after the reboot. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how things look. First of all, make sure, of course, that we can restart our session. And we're back in. We now see that the host name indeed has been updated. So that's good news. And let's take a look and see how the update is here. And you'll notice that it actually came up and it saw through WSD because of how that works without even having to do a refresh, which is great. Hope that this tutorial for you today was helpful and beneficial, and we look forward to helping you out again in the near future. Thank you. Take care.